Hello, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to another video in our mini series, how to use the DALI API to generate images from text. In the previous videos in this series, I've shown you how to do this from the terminal, using Python, using Node.js and using C Sharp in a console application. So what I would like to do in this one is to show you how to use what we've learned from the C Sharp example, and then bring it into Rhino and Grasshopper and be able to generate images directly from Grasshopper. You will see that the technique is just very similar. It's just making an HTTP request in from within Grasshopper. And it looks something like this. It's a C Sharp component that when I turn it on, it takes a few seconds to make the request, but then it takes all the inputs, the prompt, the amount of images, etc., and it gives me the URL of an object that I just generated and that I can now see here. Or if you want to extend this a little better, you can actually request the entire object as a B64 JSON blob. And then using Firefly, you can deserialize that and show the image directly on your Grasshopper canvas, which is kind of nice and nifty. Okay. So it's actually quite easy. It's going to be super short. It's literally going to be copy pasting from the console application to here. So let me show you how to do this and let's enjoy trying things out. First things first, if you haven't seen the previous videos, I very much recommend you watch the previous videos in this series, how to create, how to get your API key, how to store it as an environment variable. And maybe you want to check some other examples of how I've done this, especially the one where I did it in a console application in C Sharp. So in a nutshell, the way we're going to do this in Grasshopper is that because we don't have a Grasshopper plugin or a component that does this for us, we're going to have to write our own. And the way we're going to do that is by adapting the concept of making a an HTTP POST request to this endpoint using and sending the right parameters in the body. So the prompt, how many elements do we want, the size, etc. We're going to do that in the grasshopper way, which is basically going to be pretty much adapting the same code that we wrote for the grasshopper, sorry, for the C sharp console application. And we're basically going to take from here all the way to here. And it's going to be almost, almost copy and paste into a C sharp component, right? So let me show you what that looks like. So I have pre prepared a grasshopper file where I have here the endpoint, and then I have all the data that I want for my for my body. So I want uh, the prompt, I want one element, I want an image that is a little bigger. And because it's grasshopper, I have sliders that I can use control this, or whether if I want a bigger image, etc, etc. Right. And then the first thing that I need to do is I need to figure out where my bearer token is. Remember that in C sharp, what we did was we used the environment, get environment variable method, and we found the open API key that we already stored in our system. If you don't know what this means, please check my previous video on getting the API key and storing it as an environment variable. There should be a card somewhere popping up here, or there should be some links on the description. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a very simple C sharp component. I'm going to call this uh, open a, a, a open AI API key. All right. I'm going to give it a name. I'm not going, not going to have inputs because it's not going to read from anywhere. And then here I'm going to take the key. So I'm going to go in there and it's going to be the simplest component on earth. Basically the key, the output is going to be environment dot get, sorry, get environment variable. And here I'm going to say open AI API key, which is the name that I gave to my environment variable. If I hit run, you can see that now I can see the key here, which is not great practice, but this is grasshopper. We can't really obfuscate the data that flows between wires. So, um, I mean, this is as good as it gets in not storing your keys with the code that you distribute to other people. Okay. But it's as much as, as we can do. All right. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a C sharp script component. I'm going to call this Dali request, for example. And then the inputs are going to be the following. I want to have the URL for Dali. I want to have here the bearer token. Okay, I need to have uh, 
the key input, and then the body of the request. Remember, this is going to be an HTTP request, post request, so it comes with a string in the form of a JSON file that is the body of the request. All of these are going to be strings. So string, string, and string here. And the output is going to be here, the response. Correct. We got this. Uh, we're going to expand this. And literally, I'm just going to copy paste here a bunch of code that is going to be the is going to be copy pasted from the C sharp application that we did in console. So literally, I'm taking the date, the body, I'm turning it into bytes, I'm composing the request, I'm making sure that it's a post request with a JSON body, with the length of the body. I'm setting the protocols that I need for authentication, and I'm also setting the header of uh, the better token. And then I'm using a stream to write all the data with the, re with the request, and then to wait for the response and turn it into a stream. And that is what I'm going to be outputting by the component. So let's go ahead and do this. It doesn't work because there's nothing here. And I also the copy pasting. I'm missing a bunch of the libraries uh, that we need to make this work. So I'm actually going to copy paste this here. So I'm going to go all the way to using. And then in here, I'm going to add the request, the text, and the IO, which are libraries that are needed for those operations. And now you can see that all of that is working now. But I don't get a response yet because I haven't plugged in here. I haven't plugged in the URL. I don't have the bearer token. And then I also don't have the body yet. The body, I can't really plug the body like this because the body, remember, as per the specification, it needs to be a JSON file. So what I could do is in Grasshopper, I could just do the similar to what I did in my console application, which is I could painstakingly just take everything and stitch it together, give it the properties, escape the, the double quotes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's kind of a pain in the um, there down there. So in the case of Grasshopper, I'm just going to use the JSON library, which is Andrew Human's library, which is amazing and super easy to use for JSON serialization and deserialization. So I want to serialize JSON, but that means I'm going to add here an input, and this is going to be called the prompt. Okay, and then as I plug this in here, you can see that it generates a JSON object that has a property called prompt with the value of this. Here, I am going to enter an input called n, all right? And then I'm going to plug in this. And you can see that because n knows that this is an integer, it already gives me a clean number without the double quotes, et cetera, et cetera, because the JSON library is really, really freaking good. So now the size. I'm going to add another property called size, and this is a string here, so I get the string. And then I'm going to get another property, which is called the response underscore format, which for this test, I'm going to keep as URL. Okay. Beautiful, because this is now a fully qualified JSON object with all the proper formatting, etc., etc. I might be able to pull this in, and there's a like slight lag which means that it, something is happening, yes, and very good. You can see that the response that I get is exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting from created data and blah, blah, blah. And if I now, for example, copy the data and I paste the data on some text editor here, like a new file, and then I take this, I copy paste it into a browser, I will be able to see the image that I just requested. Oh, wow, this one is nice. It has a small seaport here of sort, like harbor. Beautiful. Okay, so this is working so far. But now, you know, because it's a, it's a JSON object, etc., etc. maybe I want to deserialize this a little better. So I'm going to keep using JSON to deserialize this. So I'm going to plug this in here. You see that I have two properties created and data. Those are the two properties that are at the first level of the JSON object. And then from data, I probably want to also deserialize data and fetch URL. And URL is this one single object. All right. So now it's much easier to just copy paste this. Correct? 
Beautiful. So we now have a very simple Grasshopper definition that is able to talk to the DALI API and retrieve images generated with a custom prompt. Now, is there any way that instead of just the URL, can we actually get the full image down inside of Grasshopper? So yes, of course there is such a way. So what I've done is I've basically copy pasted this whole thing and pasted it down here. The only thing that I have changed is that instead of the URL format, I'm going to be requesting that the response is in base64 JSON format. If you have not seen my previous videos, the when what you can choose as part of the body to request that instead of an URL, you get a base64. Base64 is basically a way to encode all the pixels of the image in a set of in a string of characters. And then it's very easy to convert that back and forth between image and base64, etc. So if you want to learn more about that, I recommend you check my previous videos on this topic, probably the one where I was doing this example in Python. I think I explained that over there. Anyway, so the point here is going to be that if I now turn this on, I'm going to execute the request. I'm going to get the response back. The data is going to look something like this. So you can see that I have a base64 JSON object. And if I deserialize this object, I get the base64 blob. And I could plug a panel to look at this, but because this is such a big string of text, the panel may actually be laggy if it doesn't crash. So I'm just not going to even bother there. And then what I need to do is now with that image, I need to somehow visualize it. So something that I can do is, for example, for this purpose, I'm actually going to be using the Firefly component. It has a lot of really good utilities for computer vision and for image processing. and because um, I'm fortunate enough that Andy Payne is my friend. He actually uh, helped me by uh, implementing these two components or three components that I don't think come with the regular Firefly distribution, which is encoding images to base64 and decoding them. So I'm going to decode this here from base64 to a bitmap. And then I'm going to use the, what is it called? The load bitmap. No, I'm going to use the uh, bitmap painter to see this image. Okay. And then you can see that I can see the image here. And now I think I should be able to like right click and save this file, or I should be able to recompute all this thing and then get another prediction that is going to be, uh, that is going to be here is going to be shown. Is it another one? It took five seconds for each one of the requests. It's kind of a lot, okay? But you can see that you can get the request. And if I were to change this, for example, uh, and and change some of the some of the stuff, this would regenerate, okay? So if you don't have this version of Firefly, I will attach as a dependency to this file. I will attach the DLL that has this. Base64 and Base64 serializing and deserializing components. And therefore, with that, the only thing that you need to do is you need to install the standard Firefly, and then you need to replace the DLL in your installation with the one that I will attach in the sample files in the code that you can find in the description of this video. Okay. And then I think that's it. I think that was getting requests for images from the DALI API using Grasshopper. I think after this, I've covered a lot of what I wanted to do. Perhaps I might do a video sometime soon on how to use C Sharp and do these requests in Unity. But I actually think that at this point, given how I've shown you how to do it in C Sharp, you might be able to do it yourself. So maybe there's a video for that coming up. Maybe there's not. Just stay tuned for that. But I think also something that I would like to try is how to do this in P5.js, which is a platform that I also enjoy a lot. So maybe after this, there might be a video also on how to make a P5.js sketch and then request images from DALI and render them in real time. And with that, I think I'm good. Thank you very much. If you liked this video, maybe press the like button, maybe share with your friends, maybe say hi in the comments, maybe join our Discord community, or none of the above, whatever makes you comfortable and happy. Thank you very much.
and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.